everybody. This is what I wrote from Lexis. Um, I'm going to give you a quick video on some tips for you to um, do some really efficient research for um, the moot court. Don't fast forward if you can help yourself. It's really inf useful information and you will be happy if you can just make yourself listen to the whole thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with this. Uh, Lexis has something new that's called Ravel View. And basically it shows the interconnections between cases. So if you just start broad, so like for instance, the, the questions presented for you guys, if you just kind of like take a, a broad view and, you, and, and the hypo I'm gonna use is this. I'm gonna talk about um, GPSs, let me take this off. GPS within the same paragraph as the Fourth Amendment. So just as a super quickie review here of the terms and connectors, the formula that you want to use is you take your fact and you connect it with your law. So GPS is my fact. I put it within the same paragraph as the law that I'm working with. Now the law can change. This, this little part of the formula can change. Sometimes it might be, instead of Fourth Amendment, it might be something like uh, reasonable expectation of privacy, right? But this is a little bit more precise, and it's the standard the court is using. It's still law, but it's not quite as broad as Fourth Amendment. I spelled that wrong, but you know what I mean. So if you want to just add in a term, you don't care where it is, then you can just use an and and say and, uh, let's say like a, a police uh, misconduct or something like that. Police misconduct, like that. Uh, you'd want to quote this, and then you would click search. So, I'm just going to just use it as an example. So the ones that I really want you to know are and, or, within the same paragraph, and then finally within the same sentence. And that I would use for like terms of art, uh, where you want it to be really, really specific. This is my go-to one, because it shows the uh, intersection between your fact and your law in a really easy way. So as again, the law can change, this is broad, you can do an element that you're gonna have a hard time proving, or you can do um, you know, the standard the court is using. So okay, so we did that, figured out my search terms, and now I'm gonna click search. So basically we're just kind of looking at whether or not tracking somebody on a GPS would be considered um, an unreasonable search and seizure. Do they need a warrant or can they just do it? Okay, this is what I wanna show you. Lexus came out with something new and it's called Ravel View. I just want you to know where it is and you know how to click it. So click in. It's going to load. A couple things I want to point out to you. It's extremely helpful in finding the major cases in each level of court. So for instance, the major case on this issue is in the Supreme Court and it's got a big circle. The bigger the circle, the more on point it is. So the way that the law usually works is you're going to, like, say you're researching the GPS thing, you'd lead with Jones as the, as the primary rule of law. Then you'd want to go down to the lower courts, see, and see how they are using it. So you're like, oh, okay, well, wait a second now. The circuit court is also citing to Jones, but it also cites to these district court cases down here. So it gives you the opportunity to really, really find cases you might not otherwise see. Notice this is number nine on your site list. Let's just take a peek over at this district court case. This is number 14 on your site list. The reason why that's important to know is, the, is that the research has shown that um, people who do research generally don't go past their top 10 results. So this is highlighting for you results that you might not get to on your own. Look at this one. This is number 68. You might not have found that one on your own because you're not going to read to number 68. But this could be a really powerful case for you. So it just kind of helps you show the interconnection of case law. Uh, the other piece I just want to show you here, this is really important. If you do filters, then you can search within your results. If you want to search on something specific, and you can also look at it by circuit, reported, unreported, so you can get a really on-point site list. So I would actually almost recommend you starting there just to get the overview of what the major cases are. Okay, so that's step one, Ravel. Step two. I know you guys are generally looking at researching circuit splits, okay? So our hypo again is whether or not the police 
can extend GPS tracking without a warrant. There is a split between the DC circuit, the ninth circuit, and the second circuit for my hypo. So I'm going to take one of those splitting circuits. This is my citation. I'm going to put it in F3rd 544, and I'm going to click search. Now, I'm going to shepherdize this case. There's two things I want you to be really aware of, okay? Here's my, here's my splitting case. I'm going to shepherdize the case. What I want you to do is go to Table of Authority. Did you guys, did I do that too fast? Table of Authority right here. This is going to give you a list of every case that's cited within this USB um, Maynard case. There's 63 of them. It tells you here every case that's cited. Now you might want to look at the Supreme Court cases or the Ninth Circuit cases. You might want to search within your results in here. But the point of it is for you to be able to say, okay, these are the cases that are citing my case or are cited within my case. And what I want to do is find law review articles that help me understand my constitutional issues better. So what you do is you, let's say I'm going to go here and I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to look at the DC circuit cases that have come out on this GPS issue because there's the most sites there. And then I say, okay, I'm going to shepherdize this case. So this US v. Gatson case was cited in my Maynard case. It was a very important case within this decision. I can shepherdize that case. And then I can look at all the law review articles that have cited to, the, to that particular case that was important in the analysis of my splitting decision. I click here on other citing sources. And then I can narrow it by law review. Just so you know, um, I'm going to send you guys the handout that I made on this so it's easier for you to follow along. So here I go to law reviews. And then you can get a list of law review articles that are really spot on point for you. Investigations and police, um, guys, you know, a lot of times they log with this. Special issue on sugar splits. You'll find ones that are on point for you this way. I highly recommend doing it. Again, just to kind of cover the concept, you shepherdize one of the cases that are cited with inside the case that you care about, and you shepherdize those cases. Okay, you sh I'm sorry. You then you shepherdize that case. You hit other citing sources, and then you narrow by law review. Uh, it's a really nice way for you to find cases that are on point and law, I'm sorry, the law reviews are on point. Okay, something else you can do. I'm going to go back here to my Maynard case, okay, which was, yeah, it's, I'm just going to click it again and I'm going to go back. So, so what we did first is we looked at the table of authorities. So you can get a list of the cases that are inside of my case. Then I shepherdized the cases inside and I looked at law review articles. You should also Look at all the law review articles on your case that, you, it, that you're trying to figure out the split with, okay? So this is USV Maynard, the one we started out with. I go to other citing sources. I go to law reviews. This is so helpful for you because what happens is that these law review articles are going to analyze what, you know, the, the, the different approaches in, within the circuit and it will give you citations and different kind of arguments that you can use. Spying on Americans, the, the whole is greater than some of the parts. So this is perfect. Look at this. Maynard Jones and the integration of GPS and the Fourth Amendment. If this is what you're writing about, you're going to want to read that article. So you can stick it in a folder, and then you can just throw it up here in a folder that you've made. Okay. That's the second thing I want you to do. Oh, you know what else you can do too? You can actually, if you feel like you get too many back, like look at this is 340 sources, you can search within your results over here. And this is this connector is called at least, okay? It look, look at it, it's all one word. I'm gonna say, I want my search term of GPS tracking to appear at least six times, six times. Tracking. And then I'm gonna uh, close my paren. What you're trying to do is add weight 
to the discussion. So instead of like GPS tracking appearing like one time in a footnote, it's got to appear at least six times before it'll show anything to you. It's a really good way to narrow down your answer set, particularly when you're working in large views. Now look, this is still 100. All right, well, maybe that's too much. Maybe there's an element of the Fourth Amendment that you really want to focus on. You know, maybe it's, you know, re you know reasonable expectation of privacy. You can do that as well. At least, you know, 10, that's probably used a lot. Reasonable expectation. Let's just do it like that. And then click. Just to kind of give you guys an idea how it works, you don't have to use search within results to use at least. You can use it anywhere, but I usually like to start broad and then narrow my answer set. So now you've got 80. These 80 are probably going to be pretty on point for you. All right, so just to review, I shepherdize my case. I click other citing sources. I go to law reviews. The reason you want to do that is because the law reviews are going to lay out all the different approaches that the splitting circuits are taking, and then they're going to argue for one way or the other. So it's a really good place for you to kind of hone your own arguments. Um, okay, onward. If you want to look at, there's a lot in Shepherds. If I'm going to actually, I want to get rid of all this, okay? I'm going to delete all of my stuff. This is extremely helpful in looking for uh, moot court type of uh, research. Wait for this last one here. I'm going to stay in Shepherds. And what I want to do is I shepherdize my case. I go back to other citing sources. And then do you notice here? Under court documents, there's 130 briefs that have been written that have cited this particular case. Well, you want to read those because if this case is your case, you know, if you have a split between the Ninth Circuit and the Fifth Circuit, you're going to want to read the briefs, and we have them. So here you go. And this gives you 130 briefs that have basically cited to this case. That's what you're finding. So maybe there's an element that you're really interested in, then you search on that element, whatever it is. I want GPS, I want tracking, you know, use at least, you can use uh, the, you know, within the same paragraph concept, whatever it is that you want. Very helpful for you for two reasons. It helps you formulate your own argument, and it also directs you to other sources because they have a lot of case law in there that they're citing to support their arguments. So good place for you to round out your research, find citations, get good ideas for arguments. Okay. Um, you can also, so notice how we did this. This was all attached to one case. So if you just have one case, your case that splits, you can do a lot with that just to kind of get, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of case law. But sometimes you want to just search generally so and see what's out there on your concept and not have it linked to a case. So I'm going to show you two things for how to do that. I'm going to go back to my original search. GPS from the same paragraph as the Fourth Amendment. These, that both of these are outside of Shepherds because it's searching conceptually with, with keywords and not linked to a particular case. So up here on Cases, if you click up, I want you to go to Briefs, Pleadings, and Motions. This is also a list. Not Notice, it's, it's conceptual. It's not tied to a particular case. Just click it, and then you'll get the different briefs, pleadings, and motions that have conceptually talked about GPS and the Fourth Amendment. I want a brief. I can narrow it like that. You can narrow by circuit. Also very helpful. Um, as you scroll down, you can find a brief that might lead you to a citation, like a case that might be really great. It might kind of flesh out an argument that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. So, and you put it in here. And then you can also, sorry, search within results. Um, the other thing by searching with keywords is, uh, I'm going to run this again, is you can just go to law reviews generally speaking, not just by case law. Because what we did is we found a case, we shepherdized it, and then we looked at all the law review articles that have cited to that case. I have found that to be a very effective way to get on point law review articles. However, sometimes it's nice to search conceptually. So this is GPS, same paragraph, Fourth Amendment. I searched it. I'm going to go here to secondary material. And then I'm going to search by law reviews and journals. Now, this is like a really cutting edge topic. 
sometimes I recommend resorting this from newest to oldest so you can get the newest articles online. You don't have to do that. And then again, this will give you other um, law review articles that can help you out for the reasons I talked about before. The Fourth Amendment in New Mexico, okay, maybe not that one, but um, all right. The last thing that I meant to mention and I didn't had to do back again with Shepherds. So I'm going to go back to this case. And the concept here is just when you're making an argument, okay, you might want to distinguish. If you're you're on one side and somebody else, so they're going to be maybe arguing with the Ninth Circuit, and you're supposed to be supporting the Fifth Circuit. So if you shepherdize the case and you want to find cases that disagree with the holding that you're trying to argue, then you want to go for the criticized decisions. You can look at distinguish too, but criticize is better. You want to see criticized and you want to look at questions so that you can say, yeah, see, this particular case also thinks it's a bad idea and this is the reason that they gave. It's just a way for you to make a concrete argument. So you want to look at the stuff that's negative when you're arguing against your opponent and then when you're trying to bolster your own argument, you want to focus on the positive. And I'll show you that in a minute. And over here, you want to say 22 cases positively followed this. And you're going to say, see, look how many cases have also followed this. And then that'll also help you flesh out your own argument and get more sites for you. So that's pretty much all I have. I just want to make sure you guys remember to start. I, I kind of recommend you starting with Ravel, I think. So it's pretty much Ravel, Shepherds, and Law Review. If you do that, I think you're pretty solid. And over here in the corner, just so you guys remember, is Ravel. If you have questions, feel free to uh, email me, and um, I'm happy to help you guys out.